So, uh, good afternoon. Um, it's four o'clock on the twenty-first, uh, Saturday, the twenty-first, and um, this is going to be our um, our one of our uh, lectures for the materials this week. Um, you know, everything's changed with the with the school and everything, so I figured I wouldn't even try to uh, dress up or anything. So I've got a fishing T-shirt on and. And I'm thinking about a goatee. My wife says it looks dirty. But, um, so uh, today we're going to talk about children in crises. Um, you know, this um, scripture tells us specifically, you know, looking out for orphans and, and widows and that sort of stuff. And I think um, especially the people who can't care for themselves or don't have the same ability to care for themselves for themselves. It's our responsibility just as humans, but also specifically as believers, Christian believers, to care for that section of the population. And so um, you're going to hear me uh, give you some facts and figures and some numbers, but um, some of the readings that I'm going to um, have you take a look at this week, I, I really want you to dig into them because I think um, I think you, you could potentially find, you know, your, your, your path or your direction that you want to take. So, um, so this material is laid out pretty well. Uh, it's, I'm just trying to give you an elementary understanding of what this looks like. And specifically, a lot of it had to do with um, individuals in the United States. One of your discussion questions this week has to do with not only how we're handling it uh, domestically, but what this would look like if we were to try to implement this internationally, outside the United States. Um, you know, the question, according to World Vision, it's estimated 2 million children are enslaved in the global sex trade. And uh, estimated 150 million children live on the streets uh, of the world. Yeah. Question I, that I that I pose in your discussion is: Would our would our response look different somewhere else from what we know than it would uh, domestically? So, um, high profile acts of violence, particularly in schools, can confine and frighten children, confuse and frighten children. Um, they may feel in danger or worry that their friends or loved ones are at risk. What we see over and over again is that after a school shooting incident, specifically because that's you know we see so much of that unfortunately in the United States, um, the level of anxiety in the student body it, it's it's uh, risen considerably. They will look to adults for information and guidance on how they should react. They're looking for models. Right? Response personnel may be called upon to help children feel safe by establishing a sense of normalcy and security and uh, maybe talking with them about their fears, their concerns, so on and so forth. Again, we're not, not all of us, some of you are, count, uh, training to be counselors, but we should understand what sort of a front line in the, uh, in the trenches sort of shoulder looks like. Um, the, the idea of crisis is not a new concept. It's been with us really since the beginning of time. Uh, it does seem, though, that due to technological invention, these crises have become more violent and, in many cases, intentional. These changes can specif uh, specifically, especially, can be especially, excuse me, especially difficult for children since they are often less equipped to deal with the negative consequences that these things bring. You know, so, for instance, if I'm um, if something's really bad, I have the ability to to you know get in my car and drive away. For instance, a child doesn't have that ability. Important things to remember when you're dealing with children: uh, they do not and cannot process information like adults. They can be easily damaged due to their uh, malleability. They can also be made whole again a little easier than adults because of that malleability. Not all children who experience disaster require counseling for trauma. That's important to remember. Um, and they draw their cues from adults. So the parent or guardian panics, they panic. Even if the world does not make sense, the uh, sort of the safe space, that family unit or that community, that tight community needs to make sense. And uh, rationally or not, uh, young, uh, young people and children tend to blame themselves for the events that are occurring, whether it makes sense or not. 
trauma can be exacerbated due to uh, prior experiences. Parents who are substance abusers um, tend to have uh, children who experience higher levels of trauma. Um, people with low economic status, limited social support, um, their children also tend to um, exhibit more trauma. Residential placement or foster care, parents with mental disorders, a history of physical abuse, um, all of these different variables, if they play into the trauma, tend to um, uh, blow it up even, even more. Uh, you should identify these potential risk factors if you're able in order to assist the process later down the road. Um, you know, if you're talking to somebody and you find one of these things, it's, it's important to take note of it because it could be that the um, trauma is not as, as, as severe, but their reaction is, is very severe based on other variables that, that you may or may not be aware of. While you're not a counselor, there may be times when you're approached by children and asked questions, right? There are some rules that you should try to follow. And, and those are in your PowerPoint as well. But make explanations age appropriate. Um, you know, my truth telling has been, uh, has gotten in, in the way of me communicating with my nephews during this um, COVID-19 outbreak. Um, I tend to tell it like it is, but I understand that children can't comprehend it as well. So I say it, then my brother ends up translating it to a way that they understand it and it doesn't make them, you know, freak out. Give honest answers. Be prepared to repeat explanations and retell stories. Remember, they don't have the same ability to function and, and process this stuff, so they may have to hear it and, and experience it multiple times. Be consistent and reassuring. They're looking for something safe, a safe place, and you can be, you may be what they're looking for. Avoid stereotypes of people, races, religions, etc. Um, you know, the things are a, a mess. You don't want to add any of that in there. Remember that children learn from watching, so model well. You know, don't tell them one thing and, and show them something else. Let children know how you feel about the issue, but don't burden them with your concerns. You're a grown-up, you're an adult. Um, you don't need to put that on them. That's a burden they do not have to carry. And don't confront your child's way of handling or the child's way of handling it. Remember, um, there's no such thing as sort of right or wrong ways to deal with trauma. I mean, you know, if, you, if your way to deal with trauma is to be violent, naturally that's wrong, but you get what I'm saying. In a crisis, uh, in a crisis situation, counselors should adhere to the following when assisting children after an event. Beware of your own reactions. Keep yourself available for the children. Be aware of the child's abilities to think and process information or inability. Use empathetic language and communication. Uh, don't speculate or give false information. We need to be truth tellers, but you know there's ways to tell truth to young, young people that's different. Monitor exposure to the media. Um, you know, um, you know the media sometimes is a is a wonderful um, sort of resource. But it can also be uh, damaging to children if they are hearing and seeing nothing. But there's been studies, and, and, and I may provide that as a reading this week, studies uh, post 9-11. Um, and well, I'm not po that, this study is not post 9-11. This is post uh, um, the um, Sandy Hook and that the children, the amount of time that the media was talking about it and what, um, what happened to the anxiety of those children who were exposed to it as to, opposed to those who were not. Know your history. Try to keep a normal routine, routine and monitor your own uh, emotional status, right? There are more specific steps to take when dealing with a particular age group, right? So when you're, when you're dealing with older children, you probably, uh, some of this stuff you can you know, pull back a little bit. You know, they're a little, little older, a little more mature. They probably have an ability to um, understand a little more than a, a young child. So um, that's going to be our, our, our piece, my, at least my sort of input on this. Um, it's a nine minutes I've given you here, but I understand that um, this is this is just my thoughts on this nine minutes. But I want you to read the uh, stuff that I have you to participate in the discussions. Um, you know, don't just skim through some of these materials. I'm giving them to you. I'm not giving them to you just for something to do. I really think it will add to your understanding of of, um, of this topic at children's and children and young people in crisis. So, all right, guys, thank you so much.